Today I want to talk to you about what it takes to become an instructional design master. I frequently get instructional designers or people who are trying to enter the field of instructional design asking me for advice on how to gain experience or what kind of education they should take to get into the instructional design field and to look better to prospective clients. I thought that I'd put together a short little video giving some from my heart advice to those people and, and others. Let me start with a story. A couple of months ago, I went to a hairdresser in Vancouver. There, what they had is a scale of people that you could have work on your hair. The top level was called a hairdressing master. Of course, I'd want a master to work on my hair, so I paid a little extra so the master could do it. Then when I'm, you know, sitting, this woman's cutting my hair, I ask her, well, what does it take to become a master, you know, in your field? And she told me, well, I've been doing it a very long time. That might sound familiar because I've seen a lot of profiles on LinkedIn where it says, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been a trainer. I've been a facilitator for 30 years. Okay, that to me is, is yes, you've had a chance to gain mastery, but mastery is not duration alone. That's like saying that the guy with an MBA just getting out of school is less experienced to run a company than the guy who's been building budgets for that company for the past 30 years. I mean, he's been there longer, right? It doesn't make him a better leader. What we have to think about is that experience and duration and experience is one thing, but how do we improve the quality of our skills? As I'm thinking about this, I asked this hairdresser, well, you said you're a master, so does that mean that you participate in those, you know, hairdressing competitions where everybody competes and you get to learn new techniques and go to new courses? And she said, I don't like doing that. I think it's too much time investment and I really just like hairdressing. I really just like cutting hair. And I thought, would I go to somebody who, who refuses to learn new things? Would I seek somebody's advice who's never actually asked for feedback about their methods? And that's what I, my advice is to people who enter the instructional design profession. That you start creating content. And a lot of times I see discussions online where, you know, something is presented or we're asking questions about hypothetical methods and there's a lot of feedback and there's a lot of opinions, but there's not enough actually putting, you know, um, putting those, act, those, those kinds of opinions into actual learning. What does that manifest itself? And I see a lot of people going, oh, I... I could see this really used a lot in learning, and I'd like, to, I'd like them to you know, tell me where, what kind of applications would they see, and for them to actually build it out. And a lot of instructional designers will say, well, you know, I want to build things, but I don't have the resources. I'm not a big company. I don't have the money to buy that software. You know, there's a lot of stuff out there like Articulate or Captivate. They offer free uh, trials for the first 30 days. So if you are an instructional designer who's into rapid development, who wants to build something quickly and effectively, there's very little uh, ramp up time to get anything going. And also, uh, you get your feet a little bit wet and you, you're basically telling a prospective employer that you're a doer, that you actually take those things you're talking about, those ID things that nobody else understands, and actually applying them to make good e-learning. That's basically what I suggest is put out product, put out stuff, get feedback, get it out there, and and get better, because that's what makes you better, is all that uncomfortable feedback uh, where people sometimes don't like your stuff, or they do, you improve on those methods, and that's how you become a true master. If you like this video, or if you like kittens, then please uh, give me a uh, a thumbs up below, or if you really liked it, you can add it to your favorites. Also, I suggest if you're into this content that you hit the subscribe button that's up there. And the other thing I'm looking for from you is that if you find that you have some ideas that you'd like uh, me to discuss on, uh, on these videos, please let me know via the comments. And if you have any comments of your own regarding the somewhat touchy topic I discussed today, then please, I'd love to hear your feedback because that's how we gain mastery. And I will see you next time.